Hi friends, in this video we shall discuss about myotom and dermatom of cervical and lumbar spine. Coming to the myotom, for C5 nerve root, ask the patient to abduction of shoulder against, against our resistance to feel the deltoid power. For the C5 innervation, earlier in the cervical spine and regarding shoulder clinical examination, we already discussed that the most common cause for shoulder pain is cervical spondylosis in which C5 innervation is affected. The most common condition of pain in cervical spine is also cervical spondylosis in which C5, C6 nerve root is affected. Coming to the myotome for C5 innervation, we ask the patient to abduct the shoulder against our resistance in a position like this. In a 90 degree position of abduction, in flexed elbow, ask the patient to abduction continuously against our resistance to feel the power of deltoid. Compare the both side. Coming to biceps muscle, that is C5, C6, both are innervated to the biceps. Mainly for C6, ask the patient to flex his elbow against our resistance and compare with the both sides to feel the difference in the power. For biceps, ask the patient to flex the elbow against our resistance. It is for both C5 and C6 are innervated to the biceps. Mainly for C6, we are doing the power of biceps is checked. And also along with that, for C6, wrist extensors are also checked like this. Ask the patient to extend or dorsiflex the wrist against our resistance for C6 innervation. Coming to C7 innervation, for C7, ask the patient to flex his wrist against our resistance. Also for C7, ask the patient to extend his elbow against our resistance for checking the power of triceps. Along with that, for C7, long finger extensors are also checked. For C7, one is wrist flexors, second is elbow extensors, and third one is long finger extensors. For C7, both the three are checked. Coming to C8, finger flexors are checked, like holding like this. Or an, another method is there, in which we shall ask the patient to interlace like this and to unfold the fingers like this. This is more better technique than the previous one. Coming to T1, Indraushi is checked as the patient to hold like this and we should do the adduction of fingers and ask the patient to do abduction. Against our resistance, ask the patient to do abduction while we adduction of fingers are done against the resistance of the patient. It should be checked. Also, another methods are there for checking the introche, which we discussed. Coming to C5, deltoid, C6, biceps and wrist extensors, C7, wrist flexors, finger extensors and triceps. Three are checked. For C8, finger flexors and introche for T1. I explained the other method of C8, long finger flexors, in which we are doing like this, it shall be checked. Also, this method, this method is more better than the previous one. Holding like this is more better. Coming to T1, which uh, we shall check, we already explained this technique, adduction of fingers against the resistance of the patient. The patient abduct the fingers while the examiner adducts the fingers and this one is first dorsal introsius is checked like this in first dorsal introsia as the patient to do the movement like this against our resistance either we shall inspection or feel either look or feel the first dorsal introsia this is checking the adduction c a t1 is ulnar nerve root so in between the little finger and ring finger a card is kept like this and pull out the card against the resistance of the patient. This is the clinical examination test for finger adductors. Both finger abduction and finger adduction and first dorsal introsius is checked for T1. For sum up, myotome cervical for C5, deltoid, 
as the patient to do abduction against our resistance for C6 biceps and wrist extensors. Biceps is innervated by both C5 and C6. For C7, triceps elbow extension, wrist flexors, and low finger extensors are checked. For C8, finger flexors, in which we shall do another technique interlacing like this for doing it easily. And for T1, intrinsic muscles to hand, finger abductors, adductors, and first dorsal introsius is checked for T1. Coming to the sensory dermatomes for our easy way to learn, middle finger is C7, radial half C5, C6, and ulnar half C8, T1. This, please look, middle finger C7, and radial half is C5, C6, and ulnar half is C8, T1. Learn like that. By seeing this picture, it's easy. For C7, it's the middle finger, and C5, C6, radial side, and C8, T1, ulnar side. By this, we shall learn it very easily. Dermatome. And coming to the reflex, a C5 and C6, both by biceps jerk, mainly C5, biceps jerk, C6, brachioradialis, which we check the power by wrist extensors, and C7, triceps jerk. These are the reflexes regarding cervical spine. This is for thoracic spine. This viewer's sign is the checking the muscle power myotome of thoracic spine. Only one clinical examination. Ask the patient to do half sit up in this particular position. Knees should be flexed to 90 degree. Arms behind the head and ask the patient to do half sit up. The knee is 90 degree flexed. Hand should be kept behind the head and ask the patient to do half sit up. If there is any anomaly regarding thoracic spine, then the umbilicus deviate towards the uninvolved side. In normal patients, umbilicus will be on the midline. Whenever there is a pathological condition in which thoracic spine is affected, umbilicus will deviate towards the uninvolved side due to the lack of muscle power in the involved side. And this is Beaver's sign to check thoracic spine myotome. Regarding dermatome of thoracic spine, T4 is at the level of nipple and T10 at the level of umbilicus. T4 at the level of nipple and T10 at the level of umbilicus. And regarding myotome of thoracic spine, Beaver's sign is advised in which on 90 degree flexed knee joint and hand should be kept behind the head as the patient to do half sit up in which whether the thoracic spine is affected then the umbilicus will move from midline towards the uninvolved side due to the pull of that particular muscles in which affected side is weak. Coming to lumbar myotome, for L1, L2, hip flexion is done against our resistance in seating position for checking the iliopsoas muscle. For L3, knee extension is done against resistance for quadriceps muscle. For L4, heel walk. Heel walk, when we are advising the patient to do heel walk, ask the patient to take 10 steps to check whether there is loss of power to tibialis anterior. Or dorsiflex the foot against the resistance. It's for L L4. For L5, there are three. One is toe extensors, the first toe for EHL, extensor halsis longus and extension of other toe, EDL, extensor digitorus longus. And another one is hip abduction against the resistance on lateral position to check the patency of gluteus medius. For S1, nerve root innervation. Toe walk, it should be up to 10 steps. And instead of toe walk, ask the patient to do plantar flexion against the resistance for checking the patency of gastrosoleus. Everters. Peroneus longus and peroneus brevis is done as the patient to do aversion against our resistance. Another one is hip extension in prone position as the patient to flex the knee up to 90 degree and do hip extension against our resistance for checking gluteus maximus. S2, S3 and S4 we are checking by doing digital rectal examination in which the index finger inserted, lubricated index finger is inserted to the anal canal and ask the patient to skews 
to check the internal and external annulus feature in which if the S2, S3, S4 nerve root is affected, surely there will be incontinence and the patient won't be able to do the excusing of the finger with the help of anal sphingers. Here we shall see hip flexion against the resistance to check iliopsoas muscle L1, L2 nerve root hip flexion against resistance in seating position. And here we shall able to see knee extension against resistance for L3 nerve root for quadriceps. Here in this video, uh, we shall see all uh, the clinical examination for L4, L5, and S1 mainly. Firstly, for L4, as the patient to dorsiflex against our resistance to check tibialis anterior, instead of this, as the patient to do heel work. Here we are doing dorsiflexion or extension against the resistance for L4 nerve root or tibialis, checking the tibialis anterior. Here we shall see that. And this is checking EHL, the toe extensors, and this is EDL. Other toe extension is done for EDL, extensor digital longus. And next for S1, plantar flexion is done against our resistance. For S1, plantar flexion is done against our resistance or ask the patient to do toe work. Instead of plantar flexion, ask the patient to do toe work to check the patency of gastrosoleus muscle. Here, avators is checked peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Ask the patient to do aversion against our resistance for checking S1 nerve root. For S1, in this video, we are checking one is plantar flexion against resistance and second one is aversion against resistance. For L5, we are checking first EHL and then EDL, first toe and then the other toe. For L4, we are checking dorsiflexion against resistance. For L4, instead of dorsiflexion, ask the patient to do heel work with 10 steps. For L5, S1, nerve root. That means mainly for S1, ask the patient to do either plantar flexion against resistance or toe work for 10 steps. Here, this is for L4. It is dorsiflexion against resistance. This is for L5, for checking EHL, first toe against resistance, then other toe against resistance, EDL. Next one is plantar flexion for S1, or ask the patient to do toe work. Here, aversion against resistance. The last two are for S1 nerve root. Additional for L5 and S1. For L5, there is hip abduction against resistance for checking gluteus medius, hip abduction against resistance to check L5 nerve root. And this is for S1 nerve root, hip extension against resistance for checking gluteus maximus in prone position in 90 degree flexed knee joint as the patient to do hip extension against our resistance. This is for S1 nerve root. Coming to and for already I explained that S2, S3, S4 is checked by digital rectal examination. Coming to the dermatome of lumbar spine, you shall see L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, S1, mainly on the lateral side. Please note this. Typically, patients felt numbness on this particular area with paresthesia. This is for S2 area. S2, S3, S4 already affected with bowel bladder incontinence and mainly the perineal region is affected. Here you shall see L4, L5, S1, S2, here L, L1, L2, L3 and S3, S4, S5 mainly on perineal area. Here you shall see L5 and here L4. S1 is towards the lateral side in which aversion, aversion is checked. Coming to the conclusion of myotome, L1, L2, hip flexion against resistance, L3, extension of knee against resistance, L4, dorsiflexion of angle against resistance, L5, coming to L5, one is EHL, other is EDL, and then is hip abduction against resistance, coming to S1, plantar flexion against resistance, aversion against resistance, and hip extension against resistance. 
please note that instead of dorsiflexion, ask the patient to do heel work for L4 nerve root to check tibialis anterior. Instead of plantar flexion to check S1 nerve root, ask the patient to do toe work to check gastrosoleus. Coming to the conclusion, reflex of lumbar spine for L4, uh, we are doing reflex of patellar tendon for L5, tibialis posterior and medial hamstring, I mean to S1, Achilles tendon. For S2, S3, S4, digital rectal examination is done. Please ensure the clinical examination of myotom and dermatom for understanding through clinical examination which nerve root is affected before taking MRI. This clinical examination is very effective to diagnose, to differential diagnose and the, regarding the prognosis and better assessment during the follow-up. This clinical examination is a very must. Thank you.